Hello YouTubers around there. Today is something different compared to my music videos I do at the moment. Um, apart from making music I'm also a little geek at building things or programming stuff and today I would like to present a project I'm working on at the moment since September 2013. And it's really clear to see that it's a quadrocopter and it's just for fun. To see how the algorithms work, so this is also the reason why I decided to really build this quadrocopter completely from the scratch, instead of bu buying actually one like the Phantom or really a microcopter, which might be a lot, lot less stressy than what I have done here, and it might also fly better, but it just just for fun. This video being the first entry of this video blog will only focus about the technical aspects, so if you are really bored by this, please uh, stop, stop watching now, because um, the next entry of the video book will contain flying videos, actually. This one is really only technical stuff. So here you can see one of the motor controllers, which is completely self-designed, but still inspired by the BL control, which is also sold by High Systems for the microcopter. A really common quadrocopter you can buy, or multicopter, you can buy in Ge from Germany, which has a lot of features, and I first thought it might, might be possible to buy one, but then on the other hand it would, wouldn't really suit the philosoph philosophy of this project, as I really wanted to make all myself. And this will also include how brushless motors are being controlled. Yeah. The motors I use are the MK2832, also from the microcopter, which is, I think, a quality motor, and this was really important for me to do to not use any cheap motors. Yeah, this is one I use together with 10 inch propellers. Here below, under this piece of plastic from IKEA, actually, <laughs> um, is the main board which is used to control the quadrocopter. In this case, it is the STM32F4 Discovery Kit, which is a rather cheap ARM evaluation board, which uh, costs about 14 euros, I guess, and it's a little bit bit, I have to say, but the price really speaks for itself. On the Discovery, on the other hand, we have a little strip board, which is um, used for also for the protection of the STM-2 Discovery in case of an on-top crash, but also holds the PA-6C, which is a rather simple GPS model to use. You just connect it to a UART, which you have on every microcontroller, I guess, and then you get the NMIA data, which, which tell you the coordinates where they are at the moment. The battery pack I'm using at the moment is a Tunigi 4 cell aqua pack, which is 3000 milliampere power, and actually at the moment you can get about 30 minutes of flight time if you don't make too much action. Actually, just floating around, it's a little, I think, not really much, but uh, other quadrocopters also don't have very much flight time. The camera used here. And also planned for FPV usage is the Roller Bullet 5S, which is uh, an action cam I bought earlier and also used on the, on my wake part video and my um, biking video to test the cam camera. And I think it also fits this quadrocopter very well. It's ha it has a live out, which is really important if I want to use it as an FPV cam. And while having a rather low resolution for FPV, I have a full HD for the recording, so I can see it later what I have recorded. Under the STM32 Discovery, there's also another strip board which contains a power supply and the MPU9150, which is a, a combined chip consi uh, consisting of an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer. And as you might guess, this is also one of the most important chips at the quadrocopter because this is the one which helps keeping the balance, because uh, it is said that flying a quadrocopter manually is rather difficult compared to a helicopter. What you see here is the RC receiver for the RC control, in this case it's the AR2610, 
which is uh, from the company Spectrum, which also sells SC controls, which I get later to. The little switch port on it is very important here because I wanted to use a PPM sum signal to feed the signal from the SC control into my microcontroller. But the problem is this one here doesn't feature it. So I had to manually make this myself out of the servo signals. As also with the BL control, the motor controllers are also connected to the main board using I2C, which was a little problem at first because the power supply really got some big disturbance on it because of the motors, the higher the speed and the power, the bigger was the noise I got on the power supply. And also you can see here, I got lots, lots of fixes. In case you can see here the bypass capacitors I was miss missing through the design, which had to be applied later on, which really makes it a little bit quirky and dirty. But way, I don't care, it runs. You may have asked yourself why the quadcopter is hanging in such a weird structure. But this was necessary at first, after constructing it and having at last at least two motors running. I had to try to test the balancing feature, to test the PED algorithms, how the quadcopter is able to keep the balance, how fast it can change the degree it has to stand. And I couldn't test it really because if I would fly it directly after developing all of this, there would be a lot of crashes and with this structure I'm, poss I'm able to test the balancing feature without him having to fly. I think this is also something I could show in the next video. For the SC control I use a Spectrum DX6i, which is a DSSS capable one. That means it can select the frequency on its own based on a binding system, which is really cool. So you don't have to uh, switch quartz or crystals in general if you have multiple of this SC controls on a field, which is really nice. One problem after um, trying a little bit with this one is the number of channels because it has the average four channels for the joysticks we have there, which are really important, but only two digital ones, which are already used at the moment. And I really have to look how I get my, more features around it. But apart from that, it's a really good SC control. Now maybe for a little design mistake I've made in the first place. My first plan was to have the edges on the arms of the middle piece. But um, only minutes before putting everything together, I had thought maybe yes, if I put the, the corners on the arms, I have a bigger stability. But after having everything put together, I have noticed that I had a little problem because the propellers can now, are now above the middle piece, which is really bad in case I want to make a housing for the middle part. And you have to believe me here, a housing is something very important because the thing was uh, designed during winter, which is a really wet time here in Germany. And if it, if it lands or crashes in the, in the grass, which is really wet at this time, you don't want to have any water on the electric stuff. So. Housing is very important. So now a few words about the legs I'm using at the moment. As you can see, there are uh, four small pieces of aluminium sheets, which have the positive effect that they are kind of springy. So if you land a little bit hard on the ground, they don't bend so easily, but instead have a spring. But as you sometimes can see, they are a little bit underlined because I crashed too hard. Uh, in this case, okay, they're kind of linear at the moment. But uh, most of the times, if I, if I crash too hard, I really have to re-bend them in shape, which sucks a little bit. At, at starting, I had these big pieces of aluminium profile, but these kind of have some um, problems because if I land too hard, the screws holding them in place were bended. So I think it's better to have some bended legs instead of bended screws keeping the structure in, in place. I have to say that plastic might be a better material for legs. So maybe some words about this part I'm working at the moment. This is the Team Blackship Greenhorn, a 5.8 GHz video transmitter, next to a circular SPV antenna. And I'm trying to do, if, as I said earlier in the video, first-person video 
to get really a feeling like I'm flying in the quadcopter. And yeah, this is something I'm doing at the moment. I first th thought it might be a cool idea to try this with an USB video grabber so that I can use a, a small video receiving box with an antenna attached to it and then a USB grabber and use, just use my laptop as a monitor. But as it turned out, this idea was rather stupid because um, the antenna was a whip antenna, which sucked really the first place. I got a range of about 50 meters, which is not really much. And then I, I contacted Team Blackchip, which then said, said to me that I should buy a patch antenna. And I also bought a Fetchak Dominator video glass, but I, I think I will also talk about this in the later videos, maybe in the third one. I have to say that the FPV part is not, is not yet completed and that I have still to work on this. So maybe sometimes in the future I will talk about this later. So, and we've already reached the end of the first blog video. I hope that at least 5% uh, of the people watching this enjoy this. I think that the next video will be a little bit more interesting as I will show the first, the balancing demo, like how the credit card player is able to balance and then some flight videos. So, stay tuned and please subscribe. <laughs>